Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about Lyme disease in dogs and answer the questions, what is Lyme disease? What causes Lyme disease? Where do we people and animals get Lyme disease? What kind of symptoms does it cause in canines? What does it mean if my dog tests positive but really isn't showing these symptoms? And several other questions that we'll go over in today's episode. Hit the subscribe button and enjoy. Lyme disease is a bacterial disease which in the U.S. is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi. And Borrelia burgdorferi is a spirochete. And what that basically means is a classification of bacteria that basically says it looks a little bit like a corkscrew. And so that's random fact that you probably didn't need to know, but I thought it's kind of interesting and, and think it's important. And as of filming this video in June of 2020, there have been about 150,000 cases in dogs. Um, which means 150,000 dogs have tested positive, and that's an approximate number. In 2019, there were approximately 360,000 cases of Lyme disease that uh, were confirmed in our canine patients across the country. In other countries, and especially on other continents, such as Europe and Asia, there are several other Borrelia species that cause very similar symptoms to Borrelia burgdorferi here in the US. And they call it Lyme disease and it very similar symptoms, very similar disease. So Borrelia burgdorferi is found in wild animal populations such as deer and mice and small rodents, raccoons, skunks, etc. And once it is in those animals, there will be a tick and this is called an exodes tick. Exodes, noun. A widespread genus of exotic ticks comprising chiefly blood-sucking parasites of humans and animals that may transmit pathogenic microorganisms. And this tick will take the bacteria up in a blood meal from those host species and will transmit it to its next host, whether that be a wild animal, a dog, or a person. During that process, it will inject some anticoagulants, etc., so that it can continue feeding and filling up with blood and digesting it. And during this process is when the bacteria is spread to its new host. The Exodes tick genus, or the Exodes genus, consists of several different, bac or several different ticks. These ticks include the deer tick, the brown dog tick, the black leg tick, and several others. And when these ticks pick up the bacteria and spread it to the new host, they bite, spread it. When our animals are exposed to the bacteria, the bacteria enters the skin at the site of the tick bite, usually after 36 to 48 hours of attachment, and it will spread through the lymphatic system in a kind of a radial pattern. And the bacteria will enter the soft tissues of the joints and other areas of the body. And that's why often one of our first symptoms in dogs is lameness because the bacteria will take hold in those soft tissues and cause inflammation and therefore causing the lameness. Sometimes we will see a fever, depression, lethargy, anorexia, etc. In very severe chronic cases in a few specific breeds, it can eventually go to the kidneys where it'll cause glomerulonephritis. Glomerulonephritis. Noun, acute or chronic nephritis that involves inflammation of the capillaries of the renal glomeruli or the blood vessels of the kidney, has various causes such as streptococcal infection, lupus, or vasculitis, or may be of unknown cause and is marked especially by blood or protein in the urine and by edema, and if untreated may lead to kidney failure. Or inflammation of the kidney. And in some cases, this can actually lead to death uh, in the patient that we see. However, in most dogs, they're able to recover with very little intervention or no intervention from a veterinarian. Uh, however, if 
your dog does test positive and is showing these symptoms, your veterinarian will probably recommend treating with an anti-inflammatory and an antibiotic for an extended period of time to take care of this. And our treatment protocols are usually very successful if caught early enough. So where does this disease occur? There are two areas of the country that seem to have a much higher prevalence of Lyme disease than the rest of the country. And these two areas are the upper Midwest and the Northeast. And this seems to very well coincide with where the Ixodes ticks tend to be highest in population, as you can probably see on the screen right now. So what can we do about it? The number one thing that we can and should do is prevention. And this goes for you and your dog. For you, I highly recommend trying to find a good repellent to prevent the tick from even getting on you, let alone attaching. If you are going out into an area where there's a high tick population, make sure that you're checking yourself after you get back and your pet. I don't make, I'm not gonna make a specific recommendation for what type of repellent you should use. However, the few that I typically will use are down in the description below. As for your pet, most of the repellents that we use on us can cause some issues with our dogs. Um, we really don't recommend using DEET because it can cause skin burns and other skin issues. And a lot of the permethrins and other repellents are very high in scents, and our dogs tend to be very sensitive to them. So I very much recommend talking to your veterinarian about what your pet should probably get for a repellent or tick prevention, flea and tick prevention. And I typically will recommend to my patients going with something like Brevecto, Cordelio, Semperica, etc. The oral flea and tick medications, um, as they tend to work really well and are a really good class of drugs. In some very extreme cases, so hunting dogs that are very high risk, I'll often pair, recommend pairing that with a really good high quality flea and tick collar. The risk of doing this is there's a lot of bad flea and tick collars on the market, so be careful which ones you pick. And there's also been a high level of fakes on the market uh, as of recently on the internet. So I would talk to your veterinarian about doing this and only in certain circumstances. Uh, the one that I typically will go with is a Soresto collar. So what about the Lyme vaccine? Well, not so fast. I do typically recommend the Lyme vaccine to most of my patients, but that's because we're in a very high risk environment where we live. There are probably 30% of the dogs that come in will test positive for Lyme or another tick-borne disease. And so the prevalence is so high that the risk of a vaccine reaction is worth it uh, most of the time in my patients because they are at a very high risk of developing Lyme disease or at least being exposed to it. The Lyme vaccine does have a higher prevalence of vaccine reactions compared to a lot of vaccines, and it's not as efficacious, which means it's not as good as a lot of our vaccines. It doesn't produce as protective of immune response as rabies or our distemper combos. And so you really do have to weigh those risks versus getting the vaccine. And a lot of that is gonna be where you are in the country, your pet's lifestyle, and their breed. So definitely talk to your veterinarian before going for a Lyme vaccine as they're gonna have the best recommendations for you and your pet. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or have questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys and love to interact and answer questions down below. The reason that I'm making these videos is really to be a source of information. Uh, there's not a lot of sources of information for the veterinary field. Um, and really, I want to be that source of information for you guys. I want to be the one that can explain it in a way that's understandable and not just speak a lingo you don't understand, as that's not really fair to you guys. If you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.